In the last video, we created a, a, a new action at the employee level, which allows us to do a shallow snapshot, which is really helpful and very convenient. We also altered our employee uh, view to allow an edit um, to the employee. So um, you know, on our actual app, um, we're able to go in and like edit the employee's name or um, uh, hours worked. Um, now in this video, we're going to talk about asynchronous actions in Mobix H3 and also some basics on lifecycle methods. Um, so in this particular case, what we'll do is um, I'll make a function at the employer level to just send um, the employer information to some sort of endpoint anytime that a new snapshot is created. Um, so to do that, um, the first thing we're going to do is on the actions uh, portion of the, of the state tree, create a new line and you're going to create a, um, this is called a flow function. Do a, um, we'll specify a function called save. So we'll do const save and set this equal to flow and then parentheses. And let's make sure we import flow from Mobex state tree. And then within here, you're going to do this function st uh, star and then um, save, which is the same name as our function. And then here, um, this is actually going to, I'm actually going to specify um, open and close parentheses. And this is actually going to be a function here. So um, if you haven't seen this before, this is something called a generator function. There's a lot of different things under the hood, but for now, you can just kind of think of it as async await, um, where you just specify async before a function. And then with, within the function, you can specify um, the await keyword to um, wait for a promise. Uh, just in this situation, we would just do, um, Instead of instead of a wait, we would use a thing called yield, um, and you can do like API dot post, um, you know slash uh, employers. Um, don't kind of worry about this crazy syntax. Just just think about async await, and it's really really similar. Um, since it, since this is an API call, um, you're going to want to make sure you install some sort of API library. Um, in my case, I'm going to install um, Axios. So I'll just do yarn add Axios. And then at the top of the file here, I'll just do import API from Axios. And that should clear this up now. Yes. Um, Okay, so this is essentially an asynchronous action. It, um, if you call this, it'll essentially um, call this uh, post or this slash employers here and send it to the server. Um, now, a few things we're gonna do. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a parameter to save. I'm gonna call it like snapshot. I'm just gonna set it equal to any. Or actually, you know what? Yeah, I'll just do any. And then, um, I will maybe I'll add this as a parameter. Let's see snapshot. Yeah, just snapshot. Um, and essentially what's going on here is that anytime the save is called, I'm passing a snapshot and then I'm sending that snapshot um, to this API call. So this would be an asynchronous action. Now how I would use this in a practical sense is I would take advantage of a um, Mobex state tree lifecycle method. Um, there's a whole section in the documentation that talks about lifecycle methods, um, but anytime a certain life, uh, life event happens with your tree, um, it can potentially get executed. One, for example, is something that's called after create. Um, and essentially, this will get executed 
any time that your tree is initially created or an instance of your tree is initially created. And within there, I'll call um, the on snapshot listener. And you know this takes in um, the model instance and then some sort of operation that you want to execute. Um, so in this case, I'll do uh, an arrow function and I'll pass in snapshot as a parameter. And then I'll execute save snapshot. Um, I'll just give it any type. All right. Um, just make sure you import snapshot. And let's see what's what this thing about here. I just used bad syntax on this after create, so just put a function before that. All right, and that should be good. Um, now make sure that you um, return both of these in the return statement. So I'll do save comment after create. Um, and just for I guess um, error's sake, I'll just do a console.log on that response. Um, all right. Um, and also do like a try catch because I know this is going to fail. Uh, but I do want to show you guys this. Um, I'll just do error E and save that and um, let's go to our component let me refresh let me try to add a new name if I hit submit I should see an error caught that API doesn't exist. I just made it up. Okay, good. All right, so that's kind of what I expected. Um, the local state is still updating, but every time I execute a snapshot, it is trying to send it to that endpoint. So I'll just create a few more things here. Yep. Uh, if I try to edit something, you should also see that get updated. All right, well, um, as you can see, this is working correctly. If I go back to the code, um, that pretty much sums up asynchronous actions and um, lifecycle methods. Essentially, if you wanna do an asynchronous action, you use syntax similar to this, where you actually use a generator function and the yield statement um, to execute your API calls. Um, lifecycle methods, uh, such as after create, um, can be used to um, execute some sort of block of code. In this situation, I just did an on snapshot method um, and then just basically executed that um, uh, save function. So literally, any time that a snapshot were to be updated, this block of code is being executed and more or less it's just persisting it to the server, which, which is actually a practical use case. Um, well, that's it for this video. There is one more important thing that I did want to touch on, and I'm just going to do it in this video. And it's back on our, if you remember at the very beginning of our presentation, we did something um, on uh, issue 440. And um, I just want to touch really quickly on the workaround for that. So um, if you do find yourself in a situation where you're having serious performance problems because you have a whole bunch of nodes, the easiest fix to do is to just essentially um, use volatile state, which I can do that right here. Um, just like, you know, after dot views or anything like that, just come down here and do dot control space. And you'll be able to see this here at the bottom called volatile. Um, if, and then, you know, obviously this takes in a, um, uh, an object as a parameter. Um, this actually will take in the whole like, you know, self thing at the beginning, um, and then an arrow function. However, we're not actually going to use self here, so you can just change this to like a underscore. Um, and now in here, if there's some sort of uh, property in your tree that um, 
is basically creating a lot of instances, such as like you know employee. Um, what you can do is you can plop that into volatile state, and so I could just say, um, you know, employee, you know, is is an array. Um, the big disadvantage of this is that um, it's it's outside of your snapshots. So anytime that you apply a new snapshot, this won't be included. Um, instead, anytime you want to update, you know, anything in volatile state, you have to do a manual mutation. Um, so you would just have to do like um, self uh, dot employees or dot employer dot employees equals and then some you know array. Uh, so it's a little bit more riskier, but in some situations that is the best alternative. Um, and I guess technically this would return a um, an object literal. Uh, and then you'd also have to like remove it from um, the initial declaration here in employer. So you have to blow that away. All right, but I'm going to revert that because I'm not going to include this in my final code. Uh, so I'll just undo all that. And this should be it for this tutorial. Um, so thank you so much for uh, watching this tutorial. The code should be up on GitHub, so feel free to take a look at it. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment. And I also encourage you to um, like and subscribe if you like this content. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.